Hi! Oh, you made it back. Thanks. <laughs> That's awesome. Good job. All right, today I have something a little different to what I normally do on the channel, and it's because I'm full of uh, energy and excitement over numbers and figures and math and stuff that I usually don't care about. Because these are really fun numbers and math. Okay. <laughs> because I know better than anyone how absurd how ridiculous, how stupid you would have to have been during the Wii U to utter the phrase, well, Nintendo's next system might be their best-selling one of all time. <laughs> Excuse me? The Wii U was a complete and total failure as far as commercial sales go, and I was always the one saying, guys, I think it's gonna do okay. <laughs> you guys all know that I love the Switch and I've said a bunch of times that I feel like it's gonna do really well. It's probably gonna do not as well as the Wii, but definitely better than the Wii U, definitely better than the GameCube. I've been saying for the longest time this system is gonna do well. And for the longest time, there's been a lot of people, even in the comment section, saying this system is going to fail. This system is, is not only not going to fail, it is currently not failing. It is currently doing pretty damn well. Hey, if you like what I do here on this channel and videos like this, I really hope you consider going and supporting ExpressVPN because they're supporting me today. You guys already know that I'm a big fan of ExpressVPN and not only protected my privacy while using internet cafes in Japan. Like, I get it, you think you've burned through everything you can possibly watch on Netflix? Well, pff, at the touch of a button, boom! Now you're in the UK watching Breakfast Club. And it's not just for the fun stuff. Even when you're at home, your internet service provider can sell all of your browsing data from the websites you visit, even when you're using incognito mode. ExpressVPN has a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk in trying it out. And you get three months free if you click the link down below, expressvpn.com forward slash beat-em-ups. Thank you, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. So as of right now, this point in time, the Switch has sold 55.7 million units. <laughs> oh, what? But it doesn't stop there. Let me keep going. In April alone, the Switch sold 808,000 units. And in the last year, 20 million. That broke the Wii's record for highest year-to-date dollar sales for any hardware platform. It's pretty undeniable at this point that I was right, but also <laughs> that the Switch is a very successful console. It's undeniable, even though a lot of people still choose to deny it. And so now the big question on a lot of people's minds uh, coming out of people's mouths isn't anymore, will the Switch be successful? That's the nail is already in the coffin for that one in a good way. I don't know if that that's in a good way. But now the question is, Will the Switch topple the Wii sales? The Wii being Nintendo's most successful console, having sold 101 total million units, which is crazy. But the fun part of this video, which we're gonna get to really quickly, is my, my vision, my idea on what games I feel could push Nintendo over that point. What games do we need? And I've come up with a list of 10, 11-ish games that I feel if Nintendo hits every one of these. But first, I want to point out that even before any of that, it does look like we're on track to pass the Wii's sales anyway. So there's a couple of graphs, and yes, graphs can be fun, and in this case, I find them fun, uh, posted to Twitter by a user named Daniel, and I'll link down below. So to understand this graph, obviously, we've got PlayStation 3, we've got Wii, we've got Switch, they all came out different times. It, it just pinpoints the original launch date for each of these systems, and it starts at there at zero. What we can essentially see is the Switch riding the same wave as the PlayStation 4, and the PlayStation 4, as of now, now has sold 106 million units, which is already 5 million units more than the Wii sold. Pretty safe to say it's a lock. So as long as Nintendo doesn't screw it up from here, <laughs> I don't see them doing that. It's safe to say at the least that the Switch is one of, and still a extremely successful console. Nintendo, for the first time in generations, has managed to market and sell a console to gamers, which I think is more impressive, let alone the fact that these numbers might even pass the Wii. Okay, <laughs> see? Numbers, figures, facts, they can be fun. All right, so what 
10 games <laughs> will propel the Switch to success from here. Before that, <laughs> trust me, this is all fun. I know, I know. I found all this stuff out just by this one topic. I, I thought to myself, what 10 games could see success? And then I started looking at the best-selling games of all time and what we could bring to the Switch or what the Switch could use moving forward. And I found it very interesting that most of the best-selling games of all time are already on the Switch. Now, some key observers out there might already have glanced at that list and noticed a few key missing games, like the second most selling game of all time being GTA 5. Wii Sports is the fourth best selling game of all time, and I kind of wish Nintendo had done a Switch Sports Clubhouse Games, the Clubhouse 51 that's coming out next month. That has a Wii Bowling game on it. It's, it's Wii Bowling, but on Switch. And I hope it does well. Nintendo's pushing it pretty hard. I've seen this game being pushed more than Minecraft Dungeons. I don't think anyone is yelling and screaming to get PUBG on Switch, which apparently is the fifth best selling game of all time above Mario Brothers. For some reason, that hurts my soul. But enough of this. <laughs> okay, now that we've looked at that, very fun, you might be thinking, well now, Wooderson, now you're gonna give us the tank, no. <laughs> Games, I feel, make or break a system. It's not the only thing that contributes to a system doing well. There's a lot of boring things that we don't care about, like marketing or whatever. There's other things that Nintendo can do. Some fun things, like the themed Nintendo Switch consoles. They add a lot to these sales numbers. Is that cheating? Maybe. <laughs> but one that I feel would really not only push a lot of people over the edge to get a Switch if they haven't already, but would cause so many of us to just buy another Switch because screw you Nintendo, Breath of the Wild 2, which may or may not be on my list. What if that releases with a Zelda themed Switch? We of yet, for some reason, do not have a Zelda themed Switch. We had a Zelda themed Wii U, which did actually, and I remember this, at that time, the Wii U was failing, and we did see a big spike in sales for the Wii U. Well, we saw a spike in sales. Also, on top of themed systems, love it or hate it, but a Switch revision, another one I know, it would contribute to sales. And whether it's a revision that gives us something we don't already have, or it's just a revision that exists for no reason, people will buy it because it's Nintendo. Third party support. <laughs> We've seen it up until now. It, actually, it's been very strong. I can't complain. There are some publishers, some developers slagging. Lagging? Slagging and lagging? I don't know how there isn't a Call of Duty game on Switch. That didn't make my list of 10 either, because I don't know how much that would help. But I mean, even those DS Call of Duty games sold really well, like in the millions. But just continued third party support moving forward. As long as we keep getting that, all things are gravy. I really look forward to uh, Outer Worlds coming out June 5th. That'll be really interesting. Honestly, that's one of the biggest third party efforts we are going, we have seen on Switch so far and we might ever see. Okay, I'm li literally going to do it now. <laughs> I've guessed things like this before, even doing my own fake directs, which I think everything from that fake direct ended up coming true. So it'll be interesting to look back at this list I'm about to give you right now and see how many of these things come true and if they actually did help the Switch's sales. Okay, in no particular order, Mario Kart 9. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe isn't a, well, it is a Switch game, but it's technically a Wii U game. So the Switch hasn't yet seen a Mario Kart game developed for the system. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the best selling game on Switch. When you think of that, it's really no surprise that Nintendo keeps porting all these Wii U games because this is a port of a Wii U game with a little bit of polish on it and it's the best selling game on the system. So there's no question that it is a system seller of a game and not having a new one on the system yet could be really exciting to see a Mario Kart 9. There's many a game that people still rant and rave and want to see on the system, but I think one that is in the top five most begged for at this point. Not only Metroid Prime 4, but I would say more intensely, a Metroid Prime Trilogy. Personally, more excited for Metroid Prime 4, but whichever way you slice it, these games aren't really like anything else we have on Switch. Nintendo's IPs are usually very white and colorful and vibrant and cartoonish. I think the closest thing we have to another Nintendo shooter IP is Splatoon and look at that. <laughs> so it's no surprise that Metroid Prime has its own Nintendo fan base. I will just blast through a couple. Uh, <laughs> Bayonetta 3, it is a big one. And it's just another reason to have a Switch to own a Switch or just something else to play on the system to make it worth having it. And, it, and we're 
we're in a similar situation as the Metroid situation on this next one, a Pikmin 4, same number, or a Pikmin trilogy. Well, look at that. History repeats itself. <laughs> I won't go into this one. I feel similar about this as I do Bayonetta, where I don't know how many people are going to consider this a system seller, but it's just one of Nintendo's staple IPs and we're yet to see it. Splatoon 2 is Nintendo's eighth best-selling game on the system, and it released very early in the Switch's lifespan. I don't think it's beyond reason to think five or six years after Splatoon 2, we might see a new one. And I would argue that Splatoon 3 will do a lot better than Splatoon 2, just because, as I said at near the start of this video, 20 million more people have bought a Switch in the last year. And so once you have this insane install base, like 55 million right now, with a game like Splatoon dropping on it, we could see something really incredible happen. Another thing is, we don't really have many games on Switch that brings people together playing competitively online. There's been a lot of rumors because we are at some kind of Mario anniversary year right now of a Mario collection set coming to the Switch sometime this year, possibly seeing the Galaxy games, the Mario Sunshine games. If this is your first time hearing about this, don't worry. I'm very clueless about it too, but it's something that people keep talking about and it's definitely some- it's Mario, right? It's Mario. And it's sunshine. <laughs> Pokemon sells like crazy. I believe, and the numbers aren't in front of me, but Pokemon Sword and Shield sold something like 17 million, which is an insane number. And I'm pretty sure even the Let's Go game sold something like 10 or 11 million. I say do it again. Uh, I don't know about going the Let's Go route. I think the hype on Pokemon Go, Let's Go, all of that. But let's remake Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. I would like that. I'm always down to replay a Pokemon game in that new gorgeous style, mind you. I really liked Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Also, we have the Pokemon Home app now, and I'm sure Ruby and Sapphire could work with the Let's Go games, and I don't know, makes sense. Okay, so I already gave away, it's such an obvious one, you guys were expecting it anyway, but Breath of the Wild 2, that is a huge one. Breath of the Wild has sold I don't know. I want to say 17 million as well, but that's a guess. It is in the top best-selling games of all time. Not near the top, but something like in the top 30 or something, which is considering how many billions of games there is, still very impressive. As awesome as Breath of the Wild is or was or will ever be, <laughs> it's also a Wii U game in a way that was brought to Switch. We haven't seen a Switch developed Zelda game, which is what Breath of the Wild 2 or whatever it's going to end up being called is going to be. And I think that hype alone is going to draw people to it, especially if it comes with a themed console. <laughs> Please, Nintendo, give me gold Joy-Cons and I will cry. <laughs> but on top of that, uh, Zelda, 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 Zelda. Something Nintendo usually does when we're all waiting for a new Zelda game is give us a Zelda tie-over game. Wind Waker and Twilight Princess combination pack. The, the Wii U games, the HD remakes, remasters, whatever, throw them on a combo pack, slice them down the middle, and give it to us on one gorgeous release. On top of that, uh, and slotting it into the Zelda bracket, I would also like to see a Skyward Sword remaster. Was it beloved by everyone? No. But something they did with Twilight Princess and Wind Waker was they went in and they adjusted certain things. I think they added a dungeon or something to Wind Waker. They tweaked a lot of the gameplay elements in Twilight Princess that were kind of drawn out and a little boring and stale. Oh, uh, Skyward Sword might need a little bit more tweaking than those two games, but just tweak some parts and make it more fun and re-release it. I'll I'll buy it. And last, and, and it's, it's kind of a cop-out, but at the same time, it's very important and very integral. It isn't a game I can think of. It's not an, another game in a franchise. It's not anything that I am aware of right now in, in gaming existence. It's just new things, new IPs, because sequels are great but they only get you so far. I love seeing new IP. Look at Splatoon. Splatoon was a brand new IP, Nintendo IP and it exploded out the gate. I would love to see another one or two at least new IPs from Nintendo on the system. I would love to see other developers taking a risk and a stab at developing a new IP exclusively for Switch like we had Octopath. That was a pretty big risk by Square Enix and even though now they've shared it to PC and I believe it's even going to Stadia, it was a Switch exclusive for the longest time. Games like Untitled Goose game. A little cute indie game that's like two hours long about a goose <laughs> took the world by storm. It was a cultural phenomenon. <laughs> I struggle to pronounce that word. You never know what game is going to be the next big hit. Again, it could be a, a very polished 
exclusive first party Nintendo IP, or it could be a little indie game. Any game can succeed on the Switch, a console that is very successful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm so glad to get all that out my system. These are just my ideas, the things I think could propel the Switch to see that kind of success, but I'm sure there's more. Leave in the comment section what you want from the Switch. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new here. Oh, come on. <laughs> so close to a million. <laughs> come on! <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Love you all, bye. Oh yes, and I know the irony that I'm wearing a PlayStation shirt in a Switch video. I'm sorry, we're in isolation and I'm all out of clean clothes. Also, I really like this shirt. I don't care. <laughs>